Today on Judge Faith. Was he on his girlfriend's lease? Once she's locked up, you can't get back in the house. No. I'm on her Section 8 voucher. You are? I'm on her Section 8 voucher. Yeah. Lie yeah. But you're not on her. You are right. Stop. You're right. You're right. right. You two. You straight line. No, you lied. No. Okay. okay. When she first got Power. Section 8, I was on her voucher. Order, sir. So don't tell order, me that. Please. And a bedroom set battle begins. If she changed the locks, you don't have access to the key. Why do they have to pay? to let you in they to the house. They didn't have to pay. That's a lie. That's you a lie not. straight from the pit of hell. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sir, you sir, you don't talk to each Michael. other Wait. anymore. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Michael Duluth is suing the defendants for $5,000 for the cost of a bedroom set. He says that the defendants had no right to sell his property after they evicted him and his girlfriend from their home. Defendants Wayne and Joyce Clower say that the plaintiff was not even on the lease and that he was not supposed to be living there. They claim that they gave him plenty of time to remove his property, and when he didn't, they legally had the right to sell it. They're countersuing for $5,000 for emotional damages. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Duluth versus Clower and Clower. Thank you, Barbara. Michael Duluth? Yes. You were suing the defendants Wayne and Joyce Clower for $5,000 for the cost of a bedroom set you say they owe you for? Yes, Your Honor. And you are countersuing for $5,000 for emotional distress? That is yes. correct. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Duluth. What's going on here? Okay, on October 2012, my girlfriend rented a four bedroom, three bathroom house from the defendants. In uh, January of the next year, 2013, we went to Ashley Furniture and we financed a seven-piece bedroom set. You and your girlfriend? Me and my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I have the contract from Ashley Furniture. Okay. Uh, my girlfriend went to jail on June 1st of this year. Well, wait, hold on a second. So in 2012, you lease, a, is it an apartment or a house? It's a house. Okay, what kind of house is it? It's a four-bedroom, three-bath house. Where's the property located? In Lancaster, California. Okay, and so you leased the property to the plaintiff's girlfriend, and the plaintiff was not on the lease? Not on the lease at all, Your Honor. Okay. I'm not okay. on the lease, but they knew I was there because... No. Well, because hold on a second, hold on a second. Well, I want you to take me from the beginning here. You say that... You buy this bedroom set with your girlfriend, you finance yes. it together, yeah. and you move it into the home? No, I moved her over there. In 2012, she moved over there October. Were you living with her in the home? Yes. The because, entire time? No, I have my own apartment, but we share a daughter. My daughter's school is around the corner from that house. So it was easier for me to stay over there and walk my daughter to school. So you stayed there approximately how many nights a week? like four nights a week. Okay. And the defendant knew I was there because they had a jacuzzi in the backyard. Well, don't, I... don't tell me what they knew. I'll ask them what they knew. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so you're, you're in the home. You have the bedroom set that you purchased. Yeah. That you're suing them for today. Yeah, we what happens? Your girlfriend was arrested? All right, she got arrested. What was she arrested for? Possession of cocaine or pills or something like okay, that. Okay, so some type of narcotics. Did she plead guilty? She pled guilty and she got 16 months. She's supposed to get released next uh, January coming up. Okay, so she's now serving a 16-month sentence. Yeah. Okay, and so that's how this all started because obviously when she's arrested and she goes to jail, no one's paying the rent, right? No, the rent no one is, nobody paid rent long before that. Okay. The last month she paid was in November of 2012. Section, she was on Section 8. Section 8 paid their part which was $800 in December and January. The lease was up January 31st. Of what year? January. We had for the housing uh, authority, Section 8, we signed up with them. They gave us the list of the tenants who were supposed to be there. And two children, okay. two minor children. He wasn't on that list, no. what you're saying. I didn't we meet had... him until 2013. 
And he was introduced as a friend. So what? Uh, mm. Is that true? No, he's lying because he had a jacuzzi in the backyard and I stood out there with him while he removed that jacuzzi from that backyard. Oh, okay, I don't didn't? understand. Sir, I, I don't understand what the jacuzzi what? has to do with this. Because he's trying to say. I just asked you if he told the truth about when he first met he's you. He's trying to say that he didn't know I was there. Here's the reason why we, there's a dispute about if they knew you were there or not. He because knew I was eventually there. you went to court and got an eviction order. That yes. is correct. For the plaintiff's girlfriend. Yes. yes. And you say it was for non-payment of rent. Yes. And that the is court correct. actually granted you that order. Yes. They when did. was that order? May I see it, please? <laughs> and you know, with Section 8, they are very specific. When you get Section 8 benefits, they are very specific about wanting to know who's living in the home and what the income is of everyone living in the home. And you're saying his name wasn't listed. Yep, his name is not on the Your list. Honor. So he was introduced to you as you say a friend. I know you disagree, but you say as a friend. That Approximately how many times did you see him at the plaintiff's home before she was incarcerated? Probably three times, maximum. Yeah, I only saw him once. What did you believe the relationship was between the plaintiff and your tenant? When I first met him, he was introduced as a friend. And not I even giving his name. Friend. Didn't even give me his name, just said, this is my friend. I went over there to check on something that they had did to the, the house. house in which they basically yeah. pulled all the carpet up to string speaker wire under the carpet. And I told her that wasn't in the lease, you weren't supposed to do that. We wound up spending almost $400 to get that repaired. But did you know that he was there on a regular basis? No, no we didn't. I did not. Like I said, I've seen him probably three, four times, max. Coming up on Judge Faith, did they have the right to sell? We put the stuff in storage for a month, <laughs> and then we got it out. Do you out. have proof of that? Oh, yeah. Do you have, you have receipts for that? Not with us. Not with us, Your Honor. So, the stuff is right here in their front yard in a yard sale. The stuff is right here in their front yard. It ain't at no Nancy. storage. Well, after, yeah. stuff, well, well, well stuff. after the fact. The stuff is in there. Well, well after the fact. Plaintiff Michael Duluth is suing the defendants for the cost of a bedroom set. He says the defendants had no right to sell his property after they evicted him and his girlfriend from their home. Defendants Wayne and Joyce Clower claim that they gave him plenty of time to remove his property, and when he didn't, they legally had the right to sell it. They're countersuing for emotional damages. You got a notice of eviction from court. Yes. When do you find out that the plaintiff's girlfriend is incarcerated? He called me, oh, it was the 28th, <laughs> I believe, of June, yeah. mm -hmm. because the lockout was supposed to be in that Sunday. He called me on that Friday mm -hmm. and told me that she was in jail and that he was Michael Duluth and he was her baby's father. And he said that he had got locked out. She took all of his clothes and his daughter's clothes. And his thing was to me that he wanted to get his daughter's clothes and he wanted to know if we could let him in. So she goes to jail. You don't have a key? No. So once she's locked up, you can't get back in the house? No. Now, by the way, back to what they saying, I'm on her Section 8 voucher. You are? I'm on her Section 8 voucher. I had to do the live scan, <laughs> everything. So they're lying. Yeah. But you're, you're not lying. You're 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 lying. So don't tell order, me that. Please. <laughs> this is dated a year after the tenant moves into their home. So maybe at some point I could explain you were that on to the you. voucher. I but, can explain but the that fact to you. is, no, but the fact is you weren't on the lease ever. No. Thank you. Right? No. Not okay. for they house. So you weren't on the lease ever. So the Section 8 issue is not really the issue before the court. The issue is if you were on the lease and if you had legal right and authority to the furniture in that home after your girlfriend was incarcerated. So your girlfriend goes to jail. You can't get in the home anymore and you call them and what happens? I called Joyce. Joyce said, okay, she changed the locks. We can't get in. The, your girlfriend changed yeah. the locks. Mm -hmm. So Joyce said that I have to go to get a locksmith, let the locksmith, pay the locksmith to let them in and make them a key for their house. You didn't have a key? No, no, we didn't. She, she locked off. Okay, so so she why is that why is that their why is that their problem? I mean, if she changed the locks, you don't have an act you don't have access to the key. Why do they have to pay to let you in? They to didn't the have house? to pay. Mm -hmm. I went to the locksmith. I made an appointment 
for July 1st, between 11 and 12. She had charged me $85. Okay, go. But the locksmith said, the only way I can do this, one of them has to be there, mm -hmm. show with proof that they own this house. I called Joyce. I said, Joyce, the locksmith said that he'll be there on the 1st. She's like, you can't do it no sooner? Like, they saw in a rush to get her stuff out of that house. So I go there at 1030, I call Joyce. Now she switched up. No, I'm not letting you in the house. So I'm like, why? These people sounded so Christian-like in the beginning. But that's what they told me. And here's what Wayne was telling me. He said, man, I go to church. I have no problem with you. I had no problem with your daughter. Uh, I'm going to let you get the furniture because I said, man, this furniture is costing me $5,000. That's, that's a lie. That's you, a lie. That's you a did lie. Not straight from the pit of hell. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sir, no. sir, Mr. 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 Clower. Preachers of LA. Mr. Clower, hold on a second. So they never show up that day? No, no one shows up? No. Okay, so what happened? We called the sheriff and they said under no circumstances could we allow him in that house nor us. They said if he was to get that stuff out of the house, it was supposed to have been before, I believe it was the 30th of June. When, what day did the June. lockout happen? The lockout happened on 3rd of July. Correct. Okay, so here's the situation. You want them to open up your girlfriend's home. You're not on the lease, so it's her home. You want them to go and open up that home and let you take things out without permission from your girlfriend. Did you get permission never from did. your no. girlfriend? Did you Hold ever on, speak did. to well, her? She couldn't, called couldn't me. do it. She, he gave her our number. Mm -hmm. She called Tell me the, the Saturday before the Sunday was the last day for them to have everything out of the house. She told me, Miss Clower, I'm sorry this has all happened. I'm in jail. You gonna have to wait until I get out of jail on the 10th of July to get your, get my stuff. You just gonna have to wait. It was her exact words. Mm. She did not say, release it to Michael, give it to him. <laughs> not at all. She said, you gonna have to wait until I get out of jail to get my stuff. And when we got the, the lockout order, which was on the 3rd, we waited. We put the stuff in storage for a month. <laughs> and then we got it out. You have out. proof of that? You have proof that you put it in storage for a month? You got receipts. That's right. I got receipts that we paid for storage. Do you, for have, a month. you have receipts for that? Not with me. Not with us. Your Honor, the stuff is right here in their front yard in a yard sale. The stuff is right here in their front yard. It ain't at no Answer. storage. Well, I guess. Stuff, well, 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 after the fact. The stuff is in there. Well, well, after the fact. It wasn't at no fact. The yeah. pictures were too good. I took the stuff out of the store. Lying. You, no, I'm sorry, you wrong, son. You don't talk to each other friend. anymore. Next on Judge Faith, who was at fault? My niece called me and she said, Uncle Michael, that man got your bedroom set in the front yard. <laughs> I had to pray. I had to pray, Lord, keep me calm. Because every time I'll go around him, he roar up like a dog. Why you gonna call? Keep calling my wife. Only Judge Faith can decide. Now you're saying that when he opened the door, he didn't know who you were. That tells me that you were not a familiar face to no, him. No, he knew who I was. That he did not know because that you were living in the home. Plaintiff Michael Duluth is suing the defendants for the cost of a bedroom set. Defendants Wayne and Joyce Clower are countersuing for emotional damages. Your Honor, we put everything in storage. Yeah, in you had we put it in storage me, for a month. After that month, we got the stuff out of storage on the 8th and the 9th of August. And that's when we had the yard sale. That is correct. The 8th and 9th of that's August. Right. What's this a photo of, sir? That's the guy that they sold the furniture, the bedroom set to Next for $700. Photo. Next photo. They ain't put nothing in storage. We did put it in that's what the bedroom is? set. That's the bedroom set? Don't. Okay. When I told them, I said, I need that furniture, because in the beginning, they were so How nice. How did you know there was a yard sale that day? How did you know to show up? Because my niece called me. And she said, Uncle Michael, that man got your bedroom set in the front yard. <laughs> I had to pray. I had to pray, Lord, keep me calm. Because every time I'll go around him, he roar up like a dog. Why are you going to call? Keep calling my wife. Because she kept answering, she kept not answering my calls. So I'm calling her, leaving her a message. Joyce, you said you're going to let me get the stuff. Can I get it? Well, sir, obviously they changed their mind about you going in to, to get the things. They can't let you in that house. Thank you. You're not on the lease. Legally, they cannot let you in the house when you, with you not being on the lease and with them not having written permission from your girlfriend. Because even if she calls them up and gives them oral permission, which she says they didn't. She did. Even if she did, though, 
What's to stop her from then coming back and saying, I never said that. You let him go in and get my furniture. I never told you that he, they need written permission to cover themselves. So what happened to the, you sold the furniture in the house, ma'am, after we, it was in storage? We yes. sold some of it, yes. And you sold the bedroom set? Yes. Are you still paying for the bedroom set? Yeah. How much It's how on much my are credit for, for? $5,000. How much did you sell it for? We sold it for $700. I'm driving by on the 19th. I see Wayne truck. I get out of my car, I walk up to the door. Wayne, he sees me coming, he opens the door. And in a nice voice, he says, may I help you? I said, yeah, I'm Michael. <laughs> Here comes the bulldog. Man, what you all keep so calling he, my he wife didn't know for? So he didn't know who you were? No, he, he didn't know who I exactly. was in the beginning. Okay. But as soon as he found so out sir, it was me, So, now, sir, let me, let me just say again. something to you, because you told me before how he knew you from living in the home, and now you're saying that when he opened the door, he didn't know who you were. That tells me that you were not a familiar face to no, him. No, he knew who I was. That he did not know because that you said, were living in the home. Here's he said, the, here's the legal. I we, I've heard enough. I've heard enough. And now, Judge Faith rules. You have a $5,000 counterclaim for uh, emotional distress? Yes. yes. What's that about? Because, number one, I have three herniated discs in my back right now. And he kept calling me, stressing me out. Now this lawsuit, he's demanding that we give him a bedroom set. When he first walked up to our garage sale, he said, where's Joyce Clower? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm Joyce Clower. And he said, I'm suing you. I'm suing you for $75,000. I'm going to own this house. You think you something. Y'all think y'all something, you know. I'm gonna take this but house. I'm gonna it. Yeah, I'm gonna own this house, is what he said exactly. Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all selling this stuff and it ain't even y'all's. And, and y'all uh, was just taking money left and right for the furniture. You know? Yeah. And yeah. All, all we could get. And all we could get. My clothes. And you know what? And Your Honor, if we have a judgment against the, his girlfriend, and if he claims that he was living there, then he should be charged too. He should be paying some of the, the back money on that rent. Okay. It, no. was all, it was we, almost nine remember, months to the day. Remember, okay. I'm not a nickel. Remember, I'm not a nickel. Stop. But you stay there, so he crashed. Mr. Clower, Mr. Clower, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to. Yeah. You gonna, all right. Here's where we are. On your counterclaim for emotional distress, I do not find that you have testified to anything that rises to the level of you being awarded $5,000 for emotional distress. No, we're done. Okay. We're done. I know that this was a obviously contentious situation between the two of you. Based on the evidence I've looked at, there was a notice of eviction. It was properly posted on the door, properly served, properly notified, although your girlfriend was in jail, and the sheriff came out and did a lockout pursuant to a court order. The sheriff doesn't do a lockout because they tell them to. The sheriff does a lockout because the court tells them to. And after the lockout is done, it's very specific rules and guidelines in your state as to what happens with the property. A tenant only has a certain number of days to come and claim the property. And it's 15 to 18 days. When they don't during that time period, then they forfeit their right of possession. Now, if you say you own half of this property and, and you should have had legal right to come and get the bedroom set, it is up to your girlfriend to communicate that information to them. Based on everything I've heard today, you do not have sufficient proof that she communicated that information to the defendant. So I find that they were within their legal rights to have the garage sale and sell the furniture. Now, if your girlfriend wants to bring a claim because she's not a part of your case, if she wants to fight this and say that it wasn't right, what they did after she gets out of jail, by all means, she can do so. But as far as your claim, sir, I do not find that you have a legal claim to this furniture. On your claim against him for $5,000, zero. On your claim against them, zero, sir. You have not met your burden of proof in court today. Judge, it's for the defendants. Thank you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us okay, your story. See you in court. I'll get them outside, okay? Thank you. We'll get you your documents outside. Okay, go on out. We'll